Welcome to VTH my dear students. In this session as a continuation to the parameter passing that, that is as a part of the sub programs. Now we are going to see overloaded sub programs. That means what? Here overloading means an overloaded sub program is one that has the same name as another sub program. That means the two sub programs are having the same name. In the same name which is having the referencing environment. So every version of overloaded sub program has a unique protocol in different languages coming to the consideration of different languages that is C++, Java, C hash and ADA includes predefined overloaded sub programs that means which are having same referencing name. In ADA the written type of an overloaded function can be used as disambiguate calls thus two overloaded functions can have the same parameters. That means they are having and they are sharing the same name. So the parameters also can be shared with the uh, among the same functions. In ADA and Java C++ coming to the C hash allows the user to write multiple versions of sub programs with the same name. That means in these languages the programmers can write the functions that means in multiple ways but the name is different. What does it mean? Where the programmer can implement the overloading of sub programs that means writing the functions that means do not uh, get confused here the sub programs are treated as the functions in a program. So the programmer can write the functions with the same name but the actions are different. So next one is generic sub program. A generic sub program is nothing but through the polymorphic sub program which takes part as the parameters of the different types on different act, uh, activities. Overloaded sub programs provide an ad hoc polymorphism and a sub program that takes a generic parameter that is used in the type expression and that describes the type of parameters of the sub program. So what it describes? what type of parameters are used in the sub programs and here you can see the example of polymorphism in C++ where the template which is given for the class type and this is called the type of sub program this is the name type first parameter type second parameter this type in indicates what kind of type it is which is nothing but the data type that is assigned to the value that means first parameter or the second parameter. Here written the first one followed by the second one and in this case if you are only returning the value of first parameter what about the second parameter and if first one is given then we can give the second one with the with the follow of the first parameter and the second parameter. So the function is going to return the values of first parameter and second parameter. In the above template it can be instantiated for any type of for which operator is defined. So here you can see here it is the notation of returning the values of first parameter as second parameter written first this is the operator used second that means first colon second which gives the reference to the first parameter and second parameter. So return the first parameter followed by the second one and the design issues of functions we are going to have the study or there are some side effects that are allowed in the design issues of functions. Parameters should always be in mode to reduce the side effect like the language ADA. What type of written values are allowed? This has to be considered at the time of function declaration. Most imperative languages restrict the written types where C allows any type of except arrays and functions and C++ like C but also user defined types are allowed. Coming to the ADA which allows any type of parameter and Java and C hash do not have functions but methods can have the type. Instead of functions Java and C hash are using the methods 
as a sub programs to define in their languages and user defined overload operators that means the user also that means the program also can define some operators that means which are overloaded operators can be overloaded in ada and c++ and there is a small example that i am going to show you in ada which is having the operator overloading here you can see the example where the function followed by the type and the variables and written as integer where sum is equal to which is an integer 0 begin for the index the range loop is given so sum is is equal to sum plus a of index so b of index is also given to that one and end the loop here you can see the operator overloading is explained in this one and coming to the output for this one c is equal to a star b where a b and c are of type vector so here the operators that are applied on these variables we can observe that means of vector type the next topic is coroutine a coroutine is a sub program that has multiple entries and controls on them itself also called symmetric control that means the control on the coroutines are by them itself caller and called routines are on the more equal basis we are coming to the sub programs and programs the equality bit, uh, among the caller and call, uh, called programs is different the control is on the called program here coming to the coroutines the control is on them itself by either it is caller or called program a coroutine called is a named that has given as resume the first resume of the coroutine is its beginning but the subsequent calls enter the point just after last executed statement in the coroutine that means a coroutine is nothing but which is implemented in many areas where the subsequent call of the coroutine is done only after the execution of last statement last executed statement coroutine repeatedly resume each other possible forever the program units that means the coroutines and their execution is interleaved but it is not overlapped means that in a program we can give the coroutines if the execution of main program is suspended and the coroutines are executed one by one that means interleaving from one to other after completion of all these the execution is returned to make or to resume the main program next one here you can see the possible coroutines that are having the problem of execution controls here we can see resume b that means b is going to be executed and to resume a b has to be written and a has to be started and again to resume b a has to be written and again to resume b b a has to be written and b has to be resumed so these are the three methods so you can see first one to resume b a has to be interleaved between a and b again then b started by resuming itself and a has to be suspended and again b has to be resumed immediately after a is suspended here you can see possible execution control between the a and b that means the two coroutines in these two diagrams you can easily observe the execution control between the coroutines in different possible ways so here i am going to conclude the entire chapter with the explanation of coroutines and generic and overloaded sub programs and in this unit what we have studied a sub program definition describes the action represented by the sub program sub program can be either function or procedure local variables in sub program can be a stack and dynamic or static 
three models of parameter passing in mode out mode and in out mode and some languages allow operator overloading and sub program can be generic and followed by the sub program we have another type of sub program that is coroutine which is a special sub program with multiple entries in the same main program so thank you so much students we can have the discussion in the next session